Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be using reinforcement learning to solve Atari games and we will we'll see that how we can train a reinforcement learning agent that will learn to solve Atari games. If you wanted to read a blog for this, the blog link is in description down box below so you, so you can go there. So let's get started with the video. But before that, I just want to make you clear about what exactly is reinforcement learning. Right, and then we'll go on what we are exactly going to do. So reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning that works on a problem that is solved by a model that is trying to learn to perform actions in a way that maximizes the reward in a particular situation. So I will take a simple figure to explain this definition. So this figure states, you have an agent, let's, let's, let us assume that this is your model and this model perform an action in a particular environment. An environment can be maybe if you take an abstract, it, it is usually an abstract environment. But in real world, let's take a garden. Garden is also an environment, right? So in Atari games, the, the board of that game is an environment. And then the agent will perform action in that environment. And then if the action is correct, then it gets the reward as well as it gets the current state. The current state means it's an observations what the interpreter has observed uh, through your actions. Okay, so that's a simple definition of reinforcement learning. Now let's see the more formal definition by Wikipedia. So Wikipedia states, reinforcement learning is an area of machine learning inspired by behavior psychology concerned with how software agents how to take actions in an environment so to maximize some notion of cumulative reward. So basically, we want to increase that reward because we want to take correct actions, right? So this agents learn from the prior actions or the prior observations. Say for an example, your agent, your, your, your agent does not perform a particular action in a good way, then it learns that. Right. So it learns uh, and then do not perform that bad action again. Right. So I'll take a very simple example of reinforcement learning in the field of computational finance is an automated trading problem. So here the agent is trading software. Right. So the agent is a software which will trade automatically. The environment is other traders. What exactly the other traders are doing state. The current state is the pride price history. And the actions can be buy, whether to buy that stock or not, sell that stock or not, or hold that stock or not, right? And the reward will be profit or loss, right? So if, you're, if your agent has taken an action, which is whether to buy or whether to sell, and whether it, it taken an action uh, through maybe these three, these three possible actions your model can take, let's say your model has taken action as a buy, then what's the reward? So if the reward is profit, it's good and the reward is loss as well, right? So, so this, this is a problem in computational finance and it may happen that you may be wondering what exactly it's state. The state is an observations for the particular problem. In this, in this straight statement over here, the state is a prize history, right? So that's why we can see the history and then we can perform the actions. So now we know it. So now we know the basics of what exactly reinforcement learning is. Now let's go ahead and talk about what exactly the goal of this video. So in this video, what we will do, we'll make use of ZML to build a DQN agent that will learn to solve Atari games. DQN, DQN model is DQ network, which is one of the fundamental reinforcement learning algorithm. It's a fundamental yet very powerful uh, d uh, model of reinforcement learning. In this video, we'll not teach you what exactly DQN is. You, you, you can, in, in, in the blog, you will be finding a blog of the detailed understanding of DQN agent. So if you want to go in mathematical detail of it, maybe you can comment it down below or we'll make a different video for it. Or you can you can see other blogs which are very nice blogs on the internet. Right. So you may be thinking, why are we gonna use ZML? Why can't we just make a make 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 in our folder? Why why there is need of ZML? So first of all, why ZML? So ZML is an extensible open source MLOps framework to pre to create production ready applications or machine learning pipelines 
built for data scientists. It has simple, flexible syntax. It's cloud and tool agnostic and has interfaces and abstractions that are catered towards ML workflows. And you may be thinking, hey, Ayush, that, okay, this is ML of framework, but what, why do we even need it? It's, you may, so basically, the reason why we need it in real world, we get tons of challenges if we do not, if we do not have a good pipeline. Say for an example, you wanted to deploy your application, this Atari games to be used by several users. So you need a pipeline for it. And ZML, exactly what it does. It creates reproducible production ready application machine learning pipelines, which we'll see in this video. So this video is not to teach you the everything about reinforcement learning. This video is to teach you that how we will use ZenML to build production ready applications that are the, or, or, or the pipelines for our reinforcement learning applications. Okay, so let's get started with our project. So we have already made a project for you. What you can do, you can, before running this project, you, mu you, you must install some Python packages in your environment, maybe if you're in a virtual environment, right? So this environment means a virtual environment. So if you, if you, if you have an environment, that's okay. If, if, if you have a virtual environment, that's okay. If you don't have, that's also okay. But we su suggest you to make a virtual environment so you can follow any blog for it, maybe using Conda or PyEnv, it is totally upon you. So you can do by the following steps. You can clone the particular repo of Zen files. Then you can, then you can go to the directory Atari Gameplay, and then you can install all the packages that are required for this project, right? So this, this is what your task is to do. Maybe it's very easy to do. So let's get started. Now we are good, ready to go now. Now you can run the code using the run the pipeline.py script. Run pipeline.py script will run your whole, whole applications in like uh, all the components of the of of our or all all the steps of our uh, reinforcement learning applications. But what are those steps? But what are those steps? So let's see our run pipeline. What exactly our run pipeline is? In run pipeline, we have a training pipeline. So let's see what the what that training pipeline consists of. So basically, if you go and run pipeline.py, if you go and run pipeline.py, we have several steps. So we have a train pipeline, which is being called in this run pipeline. So let's go with training pipeline. So in training pipeline can be found in pipelines folder. We can go in training pipeline and we have refactored it for sure. So over here, we have several steps. And this is a game wrap step, build EQN step, replay buffer step, agent step, get information meta step, and train step. And you, you, you may be thinking, hey Ayush, what these steps are? Like, can you explain me in detail? So let's get started talking about every step which we will run in this pipeline. So this, we will we'll run this run pipeline and this run pipeline calling the training pipeline which we have prepared the pipeline where it takes several steps like game wrap, build EQN, replay buffer, agent, get information meta and train. So let's get started talking about every so in the training pipeline, we have a step called game wrap. And this game wrap step uses what it does, it returns a game wrapper object. But what exactly game wrapper object is? Game wrapper object wraps over the game that you wanted to train on. And the game wrapper class wraps the OpenAI gym environment and provides some useful functions such as resetting the environment, keeping traffic with use, useful statistics such as lives left. So what exactly we are, what, what we are using, which is OpenAI gym environment. So the OpenAI gym environment is, op, OpenAI gym environment is a toolkit that provides a wide variety of simulated environments, such as Atari games, board games, 2D and 3D physical simulations, and etc. So we can train our agents on those environments, and we will be using breakout deterministic V4 environment from the OpenAI gym. So the, what, what exactly it does, so game wrap, it wraps your game over the particular environment. As we have seen in the definition of reinforcement learning, that the agent requires an environment to work on. So this game wrap 
what it does, it, it wraps that gain to the particular environment, right? And we will be using OpenAI Gym uh, that provides wide variety of simulated environments. And for, for detailed understanding of step-by-step -step code for game wrap, this is not a, as, as I told, this is not a video for explaining integrity of the step-by-step -step line of code, but, but an overview, I just want to make you clear uh, so uh, you can you can follow a detailed blog that will be a detailed blog on the Medium blog which I'll link in the description box below for detailed understanding of every step. So basically if we go in steps folder and if we find we have gamelab.py and this gamelab.py takes config as an input over here we have config which is the pre-training configs and this pre-training configs this pre-training config. So if you go there, it contains all the configurations. It, it contains all the configurations for our project, right? Say for example that let uh, eval length or update frequency or where to save environment name, learning rate, input size, right? So in ZML, you can store the configuration for the pre-training of the agent, and you can and and you can extend the base step configuration from ZML. It's very useful. So basically it takes the config and returns the game wrapper object, right? And the further on, and the further on, it wraps the open AI and provides useful function. So if you go there and see, it takes the, this game wrapper object, it takes two arguments. First of all, environment name and max loop steps. Environment name, like the, the name of the environment which you want to wrap on. So let's go and see the environment, the which you, which you can find in model.py model.py as i told it contains all the all the useful conf, u, useful methods or classes for your for training it so basically you have several methods like resetting the environment resetting the environment step which perf, which have, which you can see which it performs an action and observe the result and this is this is what it does and then we have the game wrapper object what it does it provides several methods like resetting and, and performing an action and observing the result what we got which we got right so this is your game wrapper now on the next step the next step is build dqn build dqn it builds the dqn model in keras and the, another step is replay buffer a replay buffer is a class that holds all the experiences of the agent that the agent has seen till now and and and, and on demand it gives you the store experiences like uh, we need experiences right to perform further actions so let's see in the code what this build dqn is and what this replay so basically this build dqn is builds a dueling dqn as a keras model it builds it 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 has several convolutional layers it actually and and then we have a dqn model at the end we have q values so what exactly it does it builds a dueling DQN DeepQ network as a Keras model which you wanted to train on. If you want a detailed understanding of it, I recommend you to have a good understanding of DQ, DeepQ network to help you better understand about this. Uh, to help you better understand about this, right? Cool. So this is about build Q network. Let's see what exactly the replay buffer. The replay buffer it stores the transitions. What exactly it does? It, it, it stores experiences, like it adds the experiences, it saves a transition to the replay buffer. Uh, like this, we have several methods. It returns a mini, like we, we have several methods in this and use this in training our model, right? So you can take a look in detail uh, about replay buffer, right? So this, this is these, so this was our build queue network, which, which builds a dueling DQN model in Keras, and then we have a replay buffer what exactly it does it stores your experiences and the implementation you can you, you can follow the blog for detailed understanding of step-by-step -step line of code and we highly recommend you to have a good understanding of of, of reinforcement learning prior if you're if he if you're already familiar with this uh, uh, so now let's talk about the, another step which is the agent step the agent step implements a standard double dueling deep Q learning network. We highly recommend you to check out the code of it on our uh, in the same model.py. So you can check out that on the same model.py. You can check out that. 
So the another step is our agent step. Agent step, it implements a standard double dueling deep Q learning network, which is DDDQ and agent. What exactly it does, this is an agent that will learn to solve the, it, it uses that build the human uh, network to further build us, right? That is a double dueling deep Q learning network. So I hope that uh, this step is clear. You, you can learn about a step by step line of code in online about the, 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 the given medium blog. The next step is get information meta. Now assume that you have that you have trained model for some point or, or, or your model was training and your model uh, maybe uh, you have exited the model now you now you need to again start the training or load the information till now right so yeah, you get this get information meta loads the information from the checkpoint from where it stopped otherwise it will start from very scratch okay so you can take a look at the get information meta and the code base so let's 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 take a look at on the last step which is training loop so this training loop it initializes the agent and the game environment and the tensor board writer we are actually using tensor tensor board to see how our agent is learning then further on we train the agent until the game is over so you can actually use the configs.py to tune the hyperparameters so let's take a look so over here, this agent implements a standard DDQN agent, uh, double do willing DDQ network agent. But it, it it has several methods which we use in a training loop. Now let's see our get information meta. So this get information meta. So let's take a look at its steps. And every step, if we, if we see in steps, we have an agent which is calling, which is calling this agent, which is calling this agent from here. Which is, which is calling from the model.py and giving the specified inputs, right? And these inputs, maybe some inputs are in configurations and some are your, your, uh, some are your inputs from the previous step, right? So the first step, let's recap. The first step is game wrap, which is calling game wrapper object, right? The second step is your, uh, build DQN, right? So the second step is your build DQN and this build DQN make the main dqn and the target dqn which call the build DQ, build queue network to make these two and then we have uh, and then we have a replay buffer right so it's it's different kind of thing so the first we have a game wrap second we have a build dqn third we have a game uh, uh, which is the replay buffer the replay buffer stores all the experiences uh, and over here we are calling replay buffer class giving the specified inputs and from the configurations mostly from the configurations Cool. The next step is your agent, agent that builds the agent that will learn, right? So this is our agent. The fourth step is your get information meta. So get information meta is your uh, get information meta. What exactly it does? So it's this step. It loads from. So first of all, if if the if it will start from scratch, if you want, because there is no other information. If the information, if you want to, if you want to restart from the information. Uh, like from the container information, then this else block will run. It will return the frame number, rewards, and the loss list, right? So frame number is your because because in, it is an images, right? So you 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 need frames which which we actually require. So this is a frame number, rewards, and the loss list till now, which we have got to restart the containing information. And then at last, we have a training loop. This training loop in the steps that we see, we have a training loop, and this training loop it initializes the agent, the game environment, and then train the agent until the game is over. So what it does, it starts the training from here until the frame number is smaller than the config of of total frames, and then what it does, it it it, it has a while loop, and then we have an in, initiated the time, and then we reset the game environment, and then we'll say life loss equals to true, and then what we do, we get the action from the model. And then what we do, we take a step in our environment, right? And then we add an experience to add an experience in our agent so that it learns. And then we update our agent. And then we update uh, update our agent. And then we ask our agent to learn from the updated. Uh, like we have different parameters which you got. So we ask agent dot learn. And then we append the loss in the loss list. And then also we update the target network because we we need our our model to learn right 
and then we append our loss which is come cumulative re uh, rewards which we want our cumulative cumulative rewards to learn right and then we log uh, several stops several stuffs so that uh, so that our model learns right so this was about uh, about your training loop and this is for evaluation loop which it, which it does the same which uses the train model to make prediction right and then we save the model and then if anything requires uh, like if anything does not work it will it will throw an exception or or, or maybe uh, run this block right so this was your basic stuff of steps now coming down coming back to the training pipeline this was your training pipeline right so now i want to show you one thing in run pipeline.py so basically you have this sort of game wrap build you and you just provide these these steps which are made to this training pipeline because these are your requirements these are your arguments for it so, so you give it, give it to them. So you give it to them, which is game wrap, build DQN. But what is with the return materializer? So we'll see that what exactly this is. So this is your whole steps pipeline steps looks like. So what's the note on materializer? Materializer is a, is a precise way that the data passes between the steps and is dictated by materializers. The data that flows through the steps are stored as artifacts and the artifacts are stored in artifact store. The logic that governs the reading and the writing of the data to and from the artifact stores. So basically, we have several custom custom data types which returns, right? And in Zenimo, you, you, can, you can actually use a custom materializer for make that. So basically, you can for more info, you can see the Zenimo documentation for the for the for the for, for from custom materializer if you wanted to know about. Cool. So what exactly we had learned till now? We learned about DQ. We learn we have seen that how to build a DQN and train it to play Atari games. We have made use of Xenomel to build production grade pipelines that are reproducible, scalable, etc. DQ networks are not the newest or most efficient algorithm when it comes to playing games. Nevertheless, they're very effective and can be used to play like this in this, which is described in the in this video as well as the blog post, which you which you can find the link in the description box below. So let's see how we so let's see a, a quick demo of how we can train it. So basically, I'm 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 on my WSL. Let me clear it out. Let me here clear it out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Atari gameplay and then I'm clear and then what I can do, I can do python run pipeline.py and then wait for some minutes. You can see the, the agent started training with the game number, frame number and average reward and etc. And you can see the reward is increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So this is how your model is being trained. You can see in your tensor board it's being stored. You can see this 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 particular uh, breakout saves. Maybe if you click control C then it will show you. Okay. So I hope that this makes sense. Let me control C it. Now your train has finished with the control C. Now let's go on. So I hope that you really like this video. You can feel free to ask the questions in the comment box or I would also recommend you, to, recommend you to read the blog post which we have written for you. So thank you for watching this video. I'll be catching up your next video. Till then, bye-bye. Have a great day.